Hey, what is up everybody? It's Animac here for Anime Uproar and in this video I will be breaking down all of Eren's many Titan forms and powers throughout the entire Attack on Titan story from beginning to end. These forms and powers are not just cool to talk about, they also drive the plot of the entire series to a large extent, so understanding them helps us understand the story as a whole. That is why I will be breaking it all down right here in one video for your convenience. If you enjoy our Attack on Titan content and you want us to keep it going, just leave a quick like and comment. It only takes a second, but it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you're new to the channel or you watch our videos, but you just haven't taken the time to subscribe yet, do me a quick favor and make this the video that you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications. If you're looking for more Attack on Titan content, we have an entire playlist with different Attack on Titan videos, so check that out. I will link it down in the description. Finally, this video will of course contain Attack on Titan manga spoilers. I am dealing with all the information from the manga and the anime, so please proceed with caution. You have been warned. Let's start it off with Eren's pure Titan form, the Titan he was turned into initially before he ate Grisha and became a Titan Shifter. Eren's pure Titan was very different from his attack Titan Shifter form, although it did have some features that resembled a young Eren. This Titan was only 4 meters tall, it had a large head and stocky body, and we only got to see it very briefly in a flashback, so there isn't too much that we can say about it. Eren had no memory of turning into a pure Titan and devouring his father, and so once he eventually transformed into the attack Titan, he was as surprised as everyone else. Speaking of the attack titan, let's talk about Eren's initial titan shifter form. Eren first unlocks the ability to transform into the attack titan during the battle of Trost when he is swallowed and nearly killed by a pure titan. The anguish and desperation that Eren feels in this moment as he witnesses his comrades dying and being devoured by this same titan triggers Eren's first transformation into the attack titan. He turns into a titan inside the titan who consumed him and so Eren's transformation tears the other titan apart. In case you're wondering why the pure titan that consumed Eren didn't become a titan shifter himself, it is because he still hadn't killed Eren and consumed his spinal fluid. Eren had not been digested yet and so he was able to transform before being completely devoured. As I said earlier, Eren's attack titan form is very different from his pure titan. This titan is 15 meters tall, so much bigger than his 4 meter pure titan, and rather than being stocky, his body is extremely athletic and muscular. Initially, Eren has no conscious control while in his attack titan form, and he also has no clear memory of what he did as a titan. So his titan functions on pure instinct, and the driving instinct for him is to kill every titan at all costs. So in pursuit of this goal, Eren's attack titan overexerts himself and even injures his own body in the process of killing other titans. On top of transforming into a titan fully, Eren is also able to perform a partial titan transformation. For example, he protects Mikasa and Armin from a cannonball by creating an incomplete torso of a titan and erecting it as a protective barrier. After multiple transformations, Eren becomes more accustomed to being a titan shifter and he progressively becomes more capable of controlling his titan form. It is clear from the start that Eren's titan is more physically powerful than the average titan and this is shown multiple times in the early stages of the story. Eren's titan is able to take down as many as 20 mindless titans during his first titan transformation and he even manages to take one titan's head off with a single punch. Later, Eren is able to lift a massive boulder on his own and slam it down in order to plug the hole in Trost District. This feat demonstrates a far better strength to body size ratio than the average titan. We later learned that the attack titan was always physically strong, even before Eren gained that power. In his own attack titan form, the owl Eren Kruger was able to raise an entire massive ship out of the ocean and onto his shoulders. Later in the story, Eren proves that his titan can do the exact same thing. Along with exceptional physical strength, Eren's titan also has above average endurance. For example, Eren is able to turn into a titan three times over a short period of time, which is not something that every titan shifter is capable of. Now, all titan shifters have the ability to regenerate their bodies, which allows them to quickly heal from even the most severe injuries. Although we have to say that some titan shifters are able to regenerate more quickly and efficiently than others. Eren's attack titan is quite efficient when it comes to regeneration, and he is able to regenerate major wounds including lost limbs quite quickly. Eren can of course use this impressive regeneration power in both his titan and his human form. 
As he gets accustomed to being a Titan Shifter, Eren begins seeing fragments of his father Grisha's memories, and it is eventually revealed that the Attack Titan has a very special power that no other Titan possesses. That is of course, the ability to access future memories. In short, the current Attack Titan holder can see the memories of future Attack Titan holders. Or he can send his own memories into the past in order to share them with previous Attack Titan holders. Eren was able to selectively share his memories with his father Grisha in the past, and ultimately these memories were shared with his own past self in the moment that Eren came into contact with Historia's hand. This ability for future Eren to share his memories with past Eren plays a major role in the Attack on Titan story. And in fact, this ability completely changes Eren's character arc and the ultimate outcome of the series. Eren also has the Hardened Attack Titan mode. He is not able to harden his Titan at first, but he unlocks this ability after he drinks a serum labeled Armor, which had belonged to the Reese royal family. After drinking the serum, Eren is able to harden his entire Titan body, and he is also able to generate a series of pillars from his body that can spread all around the Titan. These pillars and Eren's hardened Titan body will not disappear after Eren leaves his Titan. They will remain hard indefinitely. Eren trains for several months with Hanji in order to master his Titan hardening, and he is later able to use this hardening ability to plug holes in the walls that the warriors had created. On top of hardening his entire Titan body, Eren can also choose to harden certain parts of his body only, such as his fists and arms. He is able to use this ability in combat for both offensive and defensive purposes. His hardened punches are able to break even the armored titan's face armor, and his hardened arms are able to block even the strongest attacks. Now it's time to talk about the infamous Berserk mode, which was an anime-only addition that didn't really have any equivalent in the manga. So, back when Eren's attack titan was fighting Annie's female titan in Stohe's district, Annie completely subdued Eren's attack titan, and he helplessly watched as she got away from him and started climbing the wall to escape. Unfortunately for her, Mikasa then appeared and cut her titan's fingers, so Annie's titan fell to the ground and was captured. At least this is what happened in the manga. In the anime, this scene went down very differently. In the anime, as Annie runs away from Eren and towards the wall, Eren does not just watch helplessly. Inside his titan, Eren reiterates his vow to kill all titans, and then his body begins to change. The attack titan's eyes begin to glow blue, and lava-like veins also start glowing across his body. The attack titan goes completely berserk, it starts acting like a wild beast, and it chases down Annie before tackling her to the ground. Even his movements are very different in this mode. As he catches up to Annie, Eren's titan moves more like an ape than a human. Eren's titan then nearly kills Annie, but she manages to kick him away and she begins climbing the wall. In the end, Mikasa arrives just like in the manga and cuts her fingers, forcing her to drop back down to the ground. This so-called berserk mode might have just been a reflection of Eren's rage in that moment, but that doesn't really explain the clear physical changes on his titan's body, such as the glowing eyes and veins. For a very long time, fans have speculated that this anime-only berserk mode could pop up again at some point in the future, although it never was introduced into the manga, so if it does pop up in the final season of the anime, it will again be an anime-only phenomenon. Frankly, I do wish that we got to see more of this berserk form, because it is extremely cool. The glowing eyes and veins, the animalistic, ape-like movements, the completely wild and uncontrollable behavior, all of that is definitely something that would have been cool to see again. Let me know what you guys thought about Berserk Mode Attack Titan, and will it ever be referenced again in the anime? Oh, and of course, if you've made it this far into the video, leave a like and subscribe. Seriously, that really helps me out here on YouTube, and it also encourages me to keep grinding out more content for you guys. The next stage of Eren's Titan evolution that I want to briefly touch upon is his absorption of the Warhammer Titan power. There doesn't really appear to be any real difference in Eren's Titan's appearance as a result of him consuming the Warhammer Titan, although of course he does gain the ability to use the Warhammer Titan's powers. This includes producing giant spikes from the ground and his own body, tunneling underground, and so on. That said, after the time skip, Eren's Titan form does have longer hair, which reflects the changes in Eren's own human form. There are also some inevitable differences that come with the change of anime studios, such as the Titan's eye color, but those are not necessarily related to the form of the Titan itself. And now it's time to talk about the big one, literally. Eren's gigantic, earth-shattering, founding Titan transformation. 
Ever since he first inherited the Attack Titan power, Eren also possessed the Founding Titan power because Grisha had stolen it from Frida Reese and then passed both powers on to Eren at the same time. However, because Eren doesn't have royal blood, the Founding Titan's power was just lying dormant inside of him. The only exception was the brief moment in which Eren came into contact with the Smiling Titan. The Smiling Titan was once Dina Fritz, Grisha's first wife and Zeke's mother, and she had royal blood. It is this royal blood that temporarily activated a fragment of Eren's Founding Titan power, which allowed him to command a bunch of pure titans. In order to fully harness the power of the Founding Titan, Eren uses his half-brother Zeke, who also has royal blood, in order to gain access to Ymir Fritz through the paths. Once there, Eren convinces Ymir to stop obeying the Fritz royal bloodline and to trust him to free her and help her put an end to this horrible world. This allows Eren to finally use the many overpowered abilities of the Founding Titan, including communicating telepathically with all subjects of Ymir through the paths. If he wanted to, he could also change the very biology of every Eldian. For instance, he could make them all sterile, or he could alter their bodies in a way that allows them to fight off diseases more easily, and he could even take away all of their Titan powers if he wanted to. Eren then initiates the rumbling, and so the millions of colossal titans within the walls on Paradis set out to destroy everyone and everything except for the island of Paradis itself. But the millions of colossal titans marching in unison to trample the entire world beneath their feet is not even the creepiest thing that happens in this part of the story. Perhaps the single creepiest thing in all of Attack on Titan is Eren's founding titan form. A massive skeletal spider-esque monstrosity that towers far above even the colossal titans. This is by far the biggest titan that we've ever seen in the history of Attack on Titan, and even other founders like Emir Fritz's own titan can't measure up to it. There is no exact height measurement for Eren's gigantic founding titan, but my own conservative estimates suggest that he is at least 500 meters tall, if not more. And let's just think about that for a second because that is absolutely insane. Just as a quick reminder, the Wall Titans are about 50 meters tall. On top of its unbelievable size and raw destructive power, Eren's Founding Titan also has the ability to summon all former Titan Shifters from history and control them in order to fight off any potential enemies. There doesn't even appear to be a limit to how many Titan Shifters can be summoned at any one time, so essentially, the Founding Titan Shifter can create an entire army of former Titan Shifters that are completely controlled by the Founder. Eren is also able to detach his head from this massive Founding Titan and then create a new Colossal Titan form for himself. This Colossal Titan is the same size as Armin's Titan, and the only major difference is that Eren's Colossal Titan has very long hair while Armin's is bald. In his own Colossal Titan form, Eren is able to overcome Armin's Titan in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that is it. All of Eren's Titan forms and Titan powers explained. If you enjoy our Attack on Titan videos and you want us to keep them coming, then just leave a quick like and subscribe to the channel. This only takes a couple of seconds, but it helps us out a lot on YouTube, and of course, it's a completely free way to directly support the channel. Also, don't forget to comment down below what your favorite Eren Titan forms and abilities are. I look forward to hearing from you. Finally, feel free to check me out on Twitter and Instagram at AnimeUproar. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see ya, space cowboys!